How can I increase my willpower? I give up too easily about many things. I try to meditate for one week, then I stop for a month. I feel it's no use. I end up not sure I really love God. I think it's very difficult to be a better person. It seems that everyone else is better than me. Okay, I'm a mess. No, you're not a mess. You're not a mess. You're very, very human, very beautifully human, very honestly, vulnerably human. And this is something that we all, we all go through. I'm going to just read the question again because it was, it was slightly long, so I want you all to actually hear the content. But I also want you to hear, along with the content, I want you to hear the flow of the energy in the way that the question asker thinks and speaks. How can I increase my willpower? I give up too easily about many things. I try to meditate for one week and stop for one month. I feel it's no use. I end up not sure that I really love God. I think it's very difficult to be a better person. It seems that everyone else is better than me. Okay, I'm a mess. Now, aside from the struggles that this person is having, which are so common, if you notice the flow of the words and the sentences, what you'll notice also is that in the midst of that struggle, he or she isn't even exactly sure what they're struggling about. So we begin with a willpower problem. How do I increase my willpower? A sentence or two later, we're in the problem of, do I even love God? A sentence later, we're in the problem that I'm not a good person. Everybody else is better than I am. I'm not a good person. So we don't even have one problem that stays with us. I don't have willpower means essentially, in general, I'm a good person. I'm a committed person. But I've got this weakness of my willpower, and I need to increase it. OK? Then we've got a situation of, how do I even know if I love God? I mean, that's huge. Completely separate problem, but that's a huge pervasive like core of myself. I mean, to love God or not to love God isn't the sort of dilemma like, I don't know if I prefer strawberry or vanilla ice cream. It's a very deep core issue. And then we're at a, another very deep core issue, but one that is entirely separate, which is basically, I don't even know if I love myself. I'm trying to be a good person. I'm not a good person. Everyone else is better than I am. And I mention this to you because I was struck as I read the question with the problems that he or she mentioned, and we'll come back to those, but to something that so many of us face, which is really this sort of scatterbrainedness generalized anxiety, depression, bad feeling. But when we're not even sure what the bad feeling is caused by, is it because I don't have enough willpower? OK, well, there's a solution to that. Is it because I'm supposed to love God and I don't love God? Or maybe it's just in general because I'm, I'm really just a horrible person. 
And this is actually something that on a deep level, a lot of people are really facing this these days, which is an inner sense of something's not right, but we're not actually even sure what it is. And we're really scatterbrained about the idea of what might be wrong with us. And of course, the problem is just exacerbated, it's made worse by our email inboxes, our social media feeds, because they're constantly trying to tell us what the problem is, right? You're not happy because you do this thing. And if you just join my course, I'll teach you how not to do that thing. Or you're not happy enough because you don't have this skill and if you just join my course, I'll give you that skill. So they're all advertisements. But embedded in the advertisement is this indoctrination of what it is that is wrong with you. And so we end up in this generalized state of, I'm not quite right, something is wrong but I'm not even sure which course to join, whose product to buy, in order to figure out how to solve what it is that's wrong with me. And this is actually where our, our spiritual practice of meditation and mindfulness are so powerful because what they do is they get you beyond the story that the mind is telling. Because you see in just the question how many different stories his or her mind is telling them? Right? One person, one question, and three, four different complete stories. You're a good person but you lack willpower. You're a failure as a lover of God. Like the core of who you are has just fallen out. And by the way, in general, you're a total mess. Completely different stories. So, for all of us, this is where that meditation and just, just mindfulness is so important. To just be aware, I'm not my thoughts. I'm not this, this sense inside me telling me this is wrong, that's wrong. I'm actually that which is whole and complete. I'm not the thoughts. And this is what all of our meditation teaching teaches us. You're not the thoughts. Now, we then take the actual individual issues, because they're all important. But it's important for the asker of this question to realize there isn't actually anything wrong with you. You're not your thoughts that tell you all of those things. But let's look at them. Because you've brought them before us, you've brought them into satsang, we'll look at them. Number one, lack of willpower. You know, I think these days what we're calling a lack of willpower is actually a lack of focus and attention. We've got the willpower. If there's something that we really, really want, we do it. What we've lost is the power of attention. And so when we've decided, for example, I'm going to meditate, I sit down, I've got to stay focused, I've got to stay attentive, but I'm not able to do that so well, so I jump up. Meditation is over. Then the time for my meditation the next day, 
I realized I wasn't able to stay focused. So instead of trying to sit and meditate again, I just do something else. It's not willpower. It's attention. And it's patience. Because what's happened to us is we've also lost the ability to just be patient with ourselves. Everything now is immediate. Right? Whatever you want, you can have it immediately. Go on Amazon, order it. In India, it still takes a couple of days. In America, same day. Same day service, whatever you want. Like, it occurs to you. And there it is. Pretty soon, you know, you're just going to think it. And Amazon's going to intuit it. You know, there'll be something you can buy and stick in your brain and you'll just have a thought and Amazon's going to send it to you. Whatever we want, it's there immediately. Our sense of focus and attention has gotten much less. It used to be that we had long conversations and we read books. Then we shifted to watching TV, 30 minute shows, one hour shows, two hour movies. Then we shifted to online and we're now at a place where basically if it's not three minutes or less, nobody's going to watch it. Our attention has gotten non-existent. So we've lost the ability to simply be patient. If a video doesn't grab us, I've been told you've got three seconds. Right? This is, this is the wisdom of people in the world of communications today. You've got three seconds to grab someone's attention. Really? Three seconds? I mean, that's all we can actually pay attention before we, we scroll? We're only, only a few years from entire generations of books that began slow. I mean, there was, there was an arc that a book had. There was an arc that a movie had. But we're even losing our ability to be attentive and patient for that. So I think a lot of what is happening with our willpower is just our ability to actually sit there in meditation. Okay, nothing's happening at the moment, no problem. I'm just going to be aware of that nothingness. I mean, that is what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm just supposed to be watching. So if nothing is happening, I'm just going to watch nothingness. Now frustration is happening. Okay, I'll just watch frustration. In nothingness, in frustration, I'm breathing. I'm watching my breath. And I'm watching nothingness. Or I'm watching my breath and I'm watching frustration. Or I'm watching my breath and I'm watching a, a rising restlessness. Okay, I'm just watching it. But we've got to retrain ourselves, quite literally our brains. We literally have to retrain the neural circuitry of our brain to be able to stay attentive and engaged and patient. And then slowly, slowly what you'll find is that which you're calling willpower will grow. We lose our willpower because of that inner restlessness. Nothing's happening. I've got so much to do. Let's do something else. I need some excitement. Haven't had a dopamine hit in two and a half minutes. We need to retrain. Retrain that neural circuitry. 
And it takes patience. And it takes a bias. Practice. And slowly, slowly it'll happen. You'll train yourself. The brain keeps changing, don't worry. But just do it. And then the question about, do I even love God? Well, that's not a question for the mind to answer. And the more you try to bring the mind into love, the more off track it goes. I mean, just imagine. Imagine, close your eyes for a moment, and just imagine the most beautiful hug with someone you deeply love. It could be a parent, it could be a child, it could be a spouse, it could be a friend, it could be a tree, it could be your pet. But just a beautiful, beautiful hug in which you just lose your sense of self you lose where you end and that other person begins. Now imagine, as you're doing the hug, that you've been given the instruction to figure out approximately what percentage of your weight you are holding up and what percentage you have put on the other person and approximately what percentage of weight the other person is holding of theirs and what they've put on you. Okay. What happens to the deliciousness of the hug? What happens? The moment you start trying to figure that out, what happens to it? You can open your eyes. What happens to that feeling? Hmm? Is it just as ecstatic? Hmm? No? Everybody shaking their head no. Why? Why isn't it so ecstatic anymore? One minute you're in ecstasy. The next minute you're still hugging the person. They haven't done anything wrong. You've just been given something to figure out. What's happened? You've brought in the mind. And the minute the mind comes in... Love now is at an arm's length. Now I've got to figure it out. Now suddenly there's a place my body ends and the other body begins. Where we were two become one. Now suddenly we are very much two and I have to figure this thing out. And by the way, that's true regardless of what you are thinking about while you hug. Oh, wow, you must be exercising a lot. You feel really strong. Your back is strong. Your arms are strong. Even so, it's going to pull you out of the moment. Suddenly, two becomes one, becomes two again. So the mind should never be engaged in love. So if you're trying to figure out if you love God, you're just going to drive yourself crazy. And even if you do love God, you're going to be sure that you can't feel it because you're trying to figure it out in your mind. So instead of that, just pretend for a moment that there isn't actually a test. And there isn't. It's not pretend. It's real. But let yourself realize it. There is no exam. There is no test. There is no lie detector that somehow somebody's going to come down and stick you up and you're going to have to say if you really love God or don't really love God and it's going to measure you. Regardless of whether you love God or not, we always should love God more. So instead of focusing on where you are on the love God scale, Focus on how you can love God more. If you already love God, it'll just increase. If you don't let yet love God, no problem, it will start. 
just focus on that. Focus on ways in your life that you can love God through prayer, through japa, through seva. Whoever you serve, try to see the divine in them. Whoever you meet, try to see the divine in them. You know, when we do namaste, it literally means I bow to the divine in you. Well, there you go. It's a beautiful practice. Whoever you meet, just say namaste. Can you actually bow to the presence of the divine, to God in them? Bow to God in them. And if they happen to be someone you love, well, there you go. Love God in them. And slowly, slowly, slowly that love will blossom. And lastly, it isn't hard to be a better person unless you are competing against other people. And we should never compete against other people in anything. We should only check ourselves within ourselves. So if yesterday I got angry five times, maybe today I could get angry only four times. And if you got angry eight times today, okay. At the end of the day, we pray to God for the strength that tomorrow I should get angry less. Don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself only to what you know about the truth of yourself. Are you living as an instrument of the divine? Are you living as an embodiment of the divine? Are you living as love? Are you living as truth? Are you doing your best? It's all that can be asked of you. Just do your best. And if you find that your best doesn't satisfy you, no problem. Just ask God for the strength. The strength to do better the next day. In the morning, pray for the strength. And it'll be given. You'll have it. But remember, you're human. We're divine spiritual beings in a, in a human experience. And in that human experience, we struggle. It's okay. The goal is not to figure out how to do this human thing perfectly. Inherent in the very nature of being human is we're going to keep messing it up. The point is to realize that we're here to do our very best as humans, but to realize that at the core of who we are, we're divine. Regardless of how much we mess up the human part. And to connect with that divine inside you. So no, you are not a mess. Believe in yourself. Feel that presence of the divine in you. You are not a mess, I promise.